Welcome back everyone to our succession series on Rule the Waves, playing as France uh, with the historical gamer X Tier G and myself, Tortuga Power. Um, so I want to try to get the series over from my tenure. I want to get to 1912 January um, very quickly, as soon as possible here, because I don't want the series to stall out in any one person, and I myself, I feel like I'm guilty of that. That's kind of the unfortunate way I do things is just very slowly. So, um, in a, as a reaction to that, if we fight any more battles, I will be doing um, Admiral's Mode, which essentially means that every ship, except for your individual division, so maybe three, four ships, are going to be under AI control. This is going to make it a lot more difficult for me to do my over crazy min max uh, for positioning and all that. Um, if I need to, absolutely need to, I can always just. Um, do my little trick where you can somewhat control AI ships uh, if there's like a huge mistake that's being made, but more or less Everybody else is gonna be under AI control that also has the advantage I haven't mentioned this I think since the tutorial series I did which is so outdated. I wouldn't even recommend it now, but um, There is a victory point penalty you take for taking anything for choosing anything but admiral's mode for captain's mode Which gives you the most control you take a 20% victory point penalty so that's actually pretty significant that, you know, you can imagine having, well, what would it be, like 22% more victory points than you get from a victory in captain's mode, or like 11% more victory points than what I was getting in rear admiral's mode, and that's what probably most people play in. But just to speed things up, going to admiral's mode, and to speed things up, I won't talk too much about my reasoning there. But other things, currently have an invasion going on, uh, you can see that there's a nice They've done a nice little illustration of uh, some cross swords above our um, Antilles hol holding, and I did send, tried to send a ship over there, and I just sort of realized off camera, I was like, you know what, I bet what happened is I sent the Brennus over to the, quote unquote, supposedly towards the Caribbean, and I saw that a ship was blocked, was stopped from moving. It turns out if you move them from the Mediterranean to the Caribbean, although they don't know any better, they choose to go through Northern Europe. You know, it's not a decision that any intelligent being would make. It would know better to go through a blockaded area, but this is the AI we're talking about. So we'll give the order to specifically move to West Africa, and then from there, specifically move to the Caribbean. I'm still going to send a battleship over there to hopefully save our province. Although we have... Yeah, we haven't been able to get anybody out because of this blockade. Now, we're still doing really well in this war against Germany. Um, I think I've lost one uh, destroyer total. So Germany is down to two dreadnoughts from three. We, we sank one. They still have 22 battleships. There's just no way we can challenge them one to one. So they will blockade us, and that's fine. It's because we're still waiting for these big behemoths, the Devastation class, to finish. Um, and it's going to just take a while. But not, I don't want to leave our fleet so starved. Like I prefer high-quality low quantity but it does leave you in the situation where you probably win battles but you lose blockades and let's be frank if you can just blockade an enemy forever they will eventually just be starved out and that's not a terrible way of playing that's not the way i choose to play and i'm not going to like modify my strategy I, I feel like everyone you know historical gamer x2g each of us are adding our own unique uh, feel to this and that's what's going to make it kind of funny or fun or interesting so I am going to stick with uh, this idea of high quality ships and few of them, but unfortunately I don't want to saddle everyone else with that. So, uh, well, we'll just see. I think, like Historical Gamer, he did a good job of just building a lot of ships. Um, they were also decent quality, you know, but uh, like that was his decision to build the semi dreadnought was a good one, you know, so that at least we have ships out. Can you imagine if I was fighting this same battle uh, against Germany with only my original battleships? It would be a disaster. So that said, uh, let, oh yeah, I wanted to take a look at how the sunk ships count is. Now I think I've only lost one, the Repairier I think was the one I lost, I can't remember. But I've only lost one destroyer from what I remember. However, we can see that we have inflicted just, un, it, it's just almost an incredible, almost an unbelievable amount of damage on the German Navy, um, considering the amount of losses we've taken, which is almost none. A dreadnought, two armored cruisers, four light cruisers, and then another seven or eight destroyers. 
So uh, in the terms of this like victory point thing, it's it's really lopsided. This is way closer than it should be because the, the sunk ship count is very, very lopsided. The reason for this is because, you know, you get points for just damaging a ship. Even though if that ship goes back to port, um, it can just repair and then, you know, you don't see it in the sunk ship. At the most, it usually takes is like four months to repair something. Maybe that's something they should increase. Um, and then the other reason why their victory points are so close to ours is because, of course, the blockade, which gives them 240 victory points per turn. Now, I, I really hate the blockade mechanic. Um, if you add up these points, every ship is worth a point, and then if you're at 10% or more of their points in a sea zone, in their home sea zone, you are blockading them. That's how the game mechanic works. But that means 10% is set is just, it's preposterous, really, that it's 10%. Um, if I have 10, 10 ships and you have 11 ships, there's just no way in heck you're going to blockade me. <laughs> it intends, I mean, we're not even talking about the fact that it is entirely dependent on the quality of those 10 versus 11 ships. Let's just pretend that every ship is exactly identical. You having 11 and I having 10 does not mean you're going to blockade me. It just means that you have a slight advantage when we go to battle. So it's it just really 10% is, you know, this should be as high as even 50% more than the other person. Um, but it should definitely be more than 10%. I mean, I would settle for 20%. That, that would be like a not such a far cry from realism uh, as 10% is, in my opinion. But anyway, I don't want to talk too much because, like I said, the whole point is to pass it off to XTRG quickly. And for that, I am going to do Admiral's Mode. Yeah, so that's it. That's all. Well, I don't want to talk in circles about the same stuff over and over, so on we go. New docs completed. Oh, Sacre Bleu, my flagship is now in the yard with engine show, so it was the path. Oh my gosh. By the way, I did rename all, a lot of new ships. I did not really showcase that. Ooh, so uh, here's one of them, Homi Fu. I don't know how to say that. Om, om Fo. How would you say OU? Let me think, let me think. No word uh, OU comes to mind that's... Uh, I, I say Fu. I'm going to go with Om Fu. So, I don't know what this stands for, but man, let's fight this battle. This is a, I think this is a Latouche Treville. No, it's a Deputy Toi, okay. And that was actually an important message we need to pay attention to. Speed limited to 20, okay, not important. <laughs> way, way, way faster than our ships currently have the ability to go. Good, so we will just lock on. Actually, we'll just go fast. Unknown ship sighted. We will continue at fast here, but let's go squad max. I am presuming that we will be better than them, so we will just chase them down. And this is an AMC from the looks of it, since we're recording it as a transport. So hopefully we can. Oh, well, that was quick. It took one eight inch gun firing one time. No, it took four hits. I, I didn't even look, but we fired five guns apparently. Yeah. Anyways, it was over very quickly. We'll take it. Small victory. AMCs, by the way, the one thing I don't like about them is that they are scrapped. You do get a small amount of money back for them, but they are scrapped at the end of um, every war. All right, the enemy is blockading us still. This is the important thing. Uh, a little bit of noise outside. Let's build more docks, or should we? Actually, you know what? 33,000, this is already at an extremely large size. I'm not going to build them up further. I think that that's already uh, future-proofed that you can end the game with 33,000 ton ships and uh, be very happy about it. And the private economy is gonna continue to improve upon these for us. So we'll just uh, we'll rely on their ability to improve the docks and save that money for our own new ships. Good, so this is a lot better. I want these turns to go a little bit faster. Three German submarines. Oh, look at the Ame Ham Fu it sinks one, very good. Okay, I forgot to move our guy out of West Africa too. I just realized. Lots of good stuff there. Now, I'm not going to do this convoy defense, even though it would be against, it appears to be against, I'm not sure actually, battle size medium, but yet victory points is so high, I suspect it would be with um, the battleships and dreadnoughts. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's decline it. Uh, let's decline all the interesting things. I don't understand why this is 240 one time, 250 the next. Doesn't completely make sense to me. But we can see our unrest level is climbing. 
Um, when I see these guys go to the star mode, which means they're somewhat low on supplies or fuel or something, I am going to turn them into active fleet for a little bit. Otherwise, we have a battleship in West Africa. We want to move this one over to the Caribbean in the hopes that she can save our, our colony there. Okay, so I remember when I said that these latest, the supporting the offense, the arm, excuse me, I mentioned supporting the army usually doesn't do anything. And this is exactly the example I'm talking about. We put a lot of money into the army, as you would expect in a land war between, I mean, not a land war, just a war between Germany and France. And yet this is, I, maybe I just have the worst luck imaginable. <laughs> it's possible. But if not, then the army seems to just be a, a series of disappointments. So that is just not very helpful. Here's the British ship Australia. This is not a design I, I'm, I'm threatened by at all. It's uh, basically three centerline turrets, but they have expended two turrets for the price. I mean, they're one turret. Well, they got two turrets for the price of two, but they only have one functional turret. So that's not very threatening. And we are now suffering this uh, effect of blockades. Oh, man. So things are not looking good in terms of, although all those merchant raiders, you would expect some other some, a small retribution against the Germans. I guess we're going to have to take those battles, unfortunately, because we have to weed, weed out some more of the British or German ships. So we don't want to accept this one. It is an Antilles. Would accepting this? I mean, declining is 290. This, let's accept this. I want to take out ships in... Okay, this is a very strange thing. What do I have here? Uh, facts, that's not good. And our, our we have one ship convoy defending against... Mo most likely not something which our light cruiser here can handle. Now we have some destroyers. They are under AI control, that's fine. That's right, because we're playing admirals. Be merciful, mains class. Okay, this is interesting. Four inch guns against four inch guns. Two one, two one. Yeah. Okay. You know what? There's hope, and we have the wind advantage. So uh, that's really not a good start. I mean, that's a horrible start. Let's see if we can encourage our destroyers to help. That was not a good start at all. Okay, they veered. Oh, very good. So we actually got some 4-inch hits. Now we're on target. This is good. Another hit. Sometimes you just have to reset a little, and then you can start doing some damage. Now, if we're going to run the it continuously, I'm not going to play at, uh, at fast speed, because I'm not going to be able to react to things fast enough, but this should be good enough. We should be able to just... Nothing's really happening, but... <laughs> This should be okay. We'll see how things go, which is doing this. We both took a hit there. They appear to be slowing down, though. I can't tell if this is the case entirely. I mean, we can only go 13, so we're both pretty darn slow. Okay, we are really slow. Okay. You know, they're just going to get away unless we just pursue directly. So let's try that. Okay, I will go up to fast now since I don't know if we'll be able to catch up in time. They're just going to slowly drift away, I think. Yeah. I mean, we're barely catching up even though we're uh, just... Okay, now they're barely identifiable. Okay, fine. Hopefully we've done our best. We've avoided, you know, uh, them sinking any ships, so that should be an advantage for us. Okay, there's our ships. Just uh, march around them a whole bunch. Very good. Should be a very good victory for us. Yeah. I mean, by very good, we mean, what is that going to be, like a 100-point swing? Yeah, 200-point swing. It's really barely counteracting the, uh, not even counteracting the victory point loss we get from blockade. So that's what we'll have to avoid. <laughs> so it's really a race right now. Let us step up our rating. Okay, fleet battle. So this is the one, this is the big one. We're going to accept this. We're going to jump in.
Good luck to everyone. Here we go. Wind to the south. We will have to ma make contact with the enemy first. So we're going to speed up to 17. Actually, I'm going to go, what's our squad max? Let's go up to 18 then. So I think we have one Brennus in here. And let's run it straight. Okay, we want to get to the south quickly. So we're just going to dive to the south immediately. Let all our ships rearrange from there. So we can still give individual orders to these guys. Like, let's say I don't want this ship running amok. We can ask them to be core to the lowest battle group, which would be the party commissar. So that will probably get them to come back. And I actually do want to do that. Although it's nice to maintain, bleh, to maintain contact with the enemy, uh, we don't want to do that forever. So let's just push on. So far, our fleet is maintaining a nice order. Let's not pause on identifying some ships. I thought I already suggested that. New sighting is fine, but do not pause on identification. Oh, it's already done. Hmm, strange. And they are also, it looks like, trying to take the south. We're going to still harass them. So, okay, now we're getting close. We can at least snipe a few light cruisers, I feel. Maybe I should not pause on new sightings. All right, here it is. This is probably their fleet. We're going to swing back to the left and meet them. Okay, they have some battleships, battle cruisers in front. I don't think that's correct. All right, let's stop on the new sightings. And steady as she goes. Here we go, the main battle. And when we really feel it's desperate times or something, we can always, okay, we are the first ship to hit. That's not good. Not good. We can always, oh man, not two, not good things so far. We can always uh, force our destroyers on a run, to make a run. So far, really not good news, okay. Let's uh, even turn off, do not pause on hits, do not pause on almost anything. Okay, it's, it's fine if we get the messages to open fire. No, it doesn't matter, I don't wanna see that. We will still stop on flotation damage warnings, and I think that that's all we need, okay, good. So now this should happen a lot faster. We have done our best. I think this is, well, it's a bit messy, but hopefully we have just done our, our best and we rely on our ships to carry the day for us. Let's go down to 17. Because they are turning away. Why are they turning away? We can kind of uh, still round out. Okay, let's swing back to force them still to the north side of us. We're not done, we're still blood hungry. Bloodthirsty is probably the word I was looking for. <laughs> yeah, they have a few ships here are just going pretty darn slow. Now we've um, stretched ourselves out a bit, unfortunately. So let's hopefully wait a little bit. Come on, guys, catch up. Slow down a little bit. Where, oh, where are my battleships? This is why I absolutely hate leaving things on AI control because the AI is so stupid. Ah, that's okay. We're just gonna weave, bob and weave, boys, bob and weave. Now this person is, we gotta go after it. This is somewhat suicidal and I thought it was a, almost a mistake when Historical Gamer did the same thing, broke off, but this, we can take this ship. This is our ship. We claim it in the name of France. Viva la France. Okay, the soccer blow is taking some <laughs> serious damage, obviously. Let's find out how serious. Uh-huh, just electric power disabled. This is actually not the worst thing that can happen. I mean, it's not good for the time being, but basically what happens is uh, there's nothing your ship will be able to do, but it will soon restore electric power, hopefully soon. Soon, very hopeful word. Oh, okay. Sable has been detached as the new headquarters or whatever. Yes, we will detach her. Everyone on the Sable. That's how I would like to say it at least. Come on, we're let's just chase after this person. Hopefully the rest of our units will come along soon. Kassar is doing a great job scouting though. I really like that. So it's working out well. And this is a fleet battle which would probably have taken me like oh I'm guessing two two episodes, probably like an hour and a half total and with this new uh admiral mode which I'm, I'm actually kind of enjoying not having to worry about things 
we are getting it done a lot, a lot faster. Now, I apologize that there's a, it might be a little bit of a background noise here. If you haven't seen my latest channel update, I, basically, <laughs> this is a problem with my microphone. I'll probably need to somehow acquire another one soon that doesn't pick up on uh, outside noise as easily. All right, we could go ahead and make the command decision to do our flotilla attack now. I am going to do it. If our destroyers are good enough to get in there, okay, I just want to cut the Prusen off from, we want to trail the Brandenburg as if we're in formation, which is going to force the Prusen to do this, and now she's ours. Okay, good. We may lose her for a little bit, but we shouldn't lose her forever. What have we done in the end? Okay, yeah, we've only sank one German battleship. I know I'm counting my chickens before they hatch, but I'm assuming that eventually, yes, we will catch this ship. They almost made it all the way back to Emden. Good God. We should actually just go squad max, which is what we were already at. I'm not worried about this ship feigning back. We have basically ships on all sides of them. They can't slip through. It would be impossible. There it is. Let's get them. Okay, they were going this way. There she is, there she is. Keep up pursuit. There it is. And this is why, by the way, you sometimes put torpedoes on your ships. If we happen to launch, which we haven't yet, but we may, we may very soon. This is so close range that uh, a torpedo would be devastating. Now it could be devastating for us as well, so I wanna be very careful, look at that. We always fire when we're gonna miss. That's just the way of Admiral Tortuga for anybody who's ever Oh god, our destroyers. Oh god, they're gonna they're gonna fire torpedoes at us. Oh, we're gonna have a collision. No 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 turn off torpedo firing. Oh we just did barely avoided that. The person should be boned. <laughs> oh god. Oh she's down. Beautiful. Move to cruise speed and let's saunter our way out of this. So very very successful engagement in the end. We're gonna take I, I don't understand what these guys are doing. What are you doing? Are you detaching and heading to home port, maybe? I guess not, I mean, I guess so. So what, what happened in the end? Uh, it's a French major victory because we were able to secure that one ship. If we can divide and conquer, we will. And hey, that's gonna buy us a little bit, another lease on life. We don't need to worry about that one as a uh, historic moment. One thing, balance is sure stepping up. We're up to four million. We'll be able to des design a ship. Oh, fantastic. The German invasion has been defeated protest in Germany. Interesting. We can increase the unrest, which I don't think is a good idea. I guess this um, inspired speech is probably the best option. Yeah, we'll do that. And now this time, let us remember, okay, a cruiser battle in... Uh... I don't know what the point total is at right now, and I really wish we could look at that point total to know, because getting a cruiser does help a little bit, right? But if it's not gonna, if we're passing up the opportunity to do a fleet battle instead of that, then it's not gonna help much. Well, we shouldn't think about it too much. Let's just do it. We're doing it in the admiral's mode. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I apologize. The whole last episode was skewed. The whole last battle was skewed. But uh, well, c'est la vie. An appropriate expression at the at a moment like this. Okay, let's move on. Well, just run. Yeah, and eventually you're going to report a ship, I think. Oh, we turned off reports. Well, let's actually report new sightings just until I get the first one at least. There she is. Okay, good. Now, what are our plans? Let's take these guys and put them into core formation with us. Um, I also want to not make them screen, but that's okay. Yes, let's line up and let's put ourselves in a line here. That'd be good. Now I can just run continuously. We'll still go in and, oh God, I don't have the right one selected. Although it was, it worked out okay. We'll go to squad max, gear up for the war if we catch any of them. I mean, what, they're gonna probably head back. Do we still have on new sighting? Good. So they'll probably head back to port. Let's just start heading south-ish. 
knows what if we'll find him. I doubt it. And that'll make this unfortunate, really unfortunate turn of events. Since we're investing our time a whole month into... Oh, we got him. Okay, well, we absolutely have to launch torpedoes. Okay, so <laughs> it's going to happen pretty quick. Things are going to happen really, really quick here. We want to ride their stern so they can't launch their torpedoes. I don't believe this is actually a battleship. It's likely a cruiser. But we are taking some hits here. We are launching torpedoes. Oh my god, this might actually... It can't be. It, can't, it just couldn't be actual battleships, could it? We're landing some great shots. Oh no, the Marseille... How was she hit? No. It, it gets the jet seems impossible. I was intentionally writing in the wake of the Hellas so that she wouldn't have... So that she wouldn't have any chance at a shot on us. That's impossible. I mean, I know that this is the main threat. I know it. Ah, very frustrating. Okay, well, let's get her to go down to zero. That's going to call this battle to a very short conclusion, unfortunately. I'm trying to turn into this ship so that she also has a very low profile for an attack on a, a torpedo run. In fact, it's probably safer for us to just stay moving at this point than to not move because... <laughs> If we are not moving, we're probably a target from further torpedo hits. So let's just vanquish this Danzig class, and then uh, what will we do from there? I don't know quite yet. Let's just finish her off. Looks like she's gone. We have this other ship who could also be problematic. Pursue, pursue. Good, good, good. We're hitting her as well. Three-inch guns, probably not going to be that effective. Uh, let's not worry about her. Six-inch gun. Okay, good job, Pascal. We can still do this. Oh, man. Okay, so two more six-inch guns. That's good. All right, let's just run this out. I will slow us down to four knots now. Just enough to keep us, I mean, floating, essentially. Moving at all. <laughs> Non-stationary It's probably the best way to describe it. Let's see how we're doing in terms of flooding. Yes, very good. We've controlled our flooding. This may still turn out to be a loss, even this, despite the fact that we have definitely sunk one of those ships. Now all we need to do is maintain, I think five knots or less should be fine to avoid flooding. Um, I mean, reopening the bulk, uh, the bulkhead by too high of a speed. You know, we're a fragile being right now with uh, <laughs> our holes been ruptured by a massive torpedo gouge. So, we'll have to be a little bit careful. So, looks like we won't encounter anything else on the way home. We'll just take a look at the world as it roams, I mean the sun rotates. Well, really, as the Earth spins and we face a different side of the sun. Oh, looks like it's summer. August, okay, yeah. We're in the North Pole's full daylight all the time. This is going to take a while, huh? A little bit longer. Another 10 seconds. There it is. And it is a French minor victory. The important thing is we've destroyed one more ship. <laughs> Taking one more out. So. What did, were we up against? Yeah, it was only heavy cruisers. The nice and, nice and new. Nice and, nice and new. No, nice and new. I had it right. Nice and now? I can't remember. I, I specifically remember not knowing how to pronounce this name several times. Nice now, I think. It's a good ship. Nine-inch guns. Um, what else do they have? The Emden, which we know already. The ten-inch gun. Seven-inch gun secondaries. And Hertha class. This is a new one. Two ten-inch guns. I dislike this. This is not a good design. It's not a good design. Low armor. Okay, yeah. We don't mind that one. Good. So, exit this battle. I really apologize I didn't have the screen centered for the previous, um, the fleet engagement, the entire fleet engagement. So that is about as minor of a minor battle as you can get. <laughs> a hundred or so victory point gain swing is pretty minor. So let's get some more ships rating. I almost don't care who. We just, it's its really at the cusp. If we have to deny foreign tonnage even, I, I think we ought to do it. So let's just do this. Let's put every, um, OK, 
Okay, not you, but let's get every other. Let's get all these guys to radio mode, and let's see. Our ton of jump foreign stations is positive anywhere. I mean, I don't know if it updates, but usually when you do the rating here, we'll update down here if it's not okay. So I think that might actually be okay. Let's get this one to rate as well. We really need to pull this out. Okay, so Southeast Asia, how are we looking in Southeast Asia? 14,000. The places we can really spare it is the Mediterranean, so let's get uh, this Lavoisier to raid as well. I'm not sure it'll help much. And uh, probably a few of our Sardinias. No, let's get the Lavoisiers. I, I, I actually don't know. Let's get one more under rating as well. Okay, good. So that is our hope. Well, you know what? It's funny. We're doing rating in Northern Europe. How close is the point difference? Because every chip that's on rating doesn't count towards the blockade total. So we can see it's 173 right now. If I was to sort by location, and let me sort by sat status and location. So we'll, in Northern Europe, we'll get all the rating group down here. We only have these five ships rating in Northern Europe. That's not that many. This is gonna add mm, like six. I don't know if these are worth six or four. I think it's four, but let's just pretend, let's just do the, the best case scenario that this would add. Let's pretend these are four, which is 12, and these are six, which is uh, another 12, so 24. 24 point swing is the, is the best case scenario. And we are at much, I mean, they're way, way, way beyond that. We would have to get up to like 240, so it's just not enough. Okay, so continue rating. We'll just hedge all our bets on that getting the rating victory. Okay, one more month before the Cote Legon uh, is returned. We have a few destroyers in the Mediterranean, that's fine. And in West Africa, everyone is rating who really needs to be. So good, push on. Oh man, they just don't give up. I think that we should say the Navy can fight on if needed, but this is a victory, right? I don't know if we should, we're, okay, you know what, let's just do this top one. Aha, a peace is concluded. We are saying gaining large territories and considerable war reparations. Victory, fantastic. Well, this is, this is really good. We're allowed four value here. Um, where do we want it? We don't want Cashel Bay, which is up here. We don't have any holdings there. Um, something like the Bismarck, these, all four of these are in Southeast Asia, so we could kind of strengthen our hold there. We alt alternative is we could take some from each area. We could take maybe the northern or the Caroline Islands and here or Southwest Africa. We could just focus more on Africa. That seems to make more sense. What if we do Tanganyika? We fought. That was our first battle, and we also grab Southwest Africa or Cameroon. Yeah, I mean, okay, we can splice it up a <laughs> hundred different ways all day, but let's just grab these two. And we got some ships back. Viva la France. Very good. I, I'm quite happy with this. So we have taken... Which one? I forgot which ones we, t we took. I don't remember. I already totally forgot. I know that we took... Uh, the, yeah, Tanganyika. Did we take Southwest Africa? Was that the other one? <laughs> I can't remember. I think that makes sense. Yeah, probably that one. I honest to God don't remember. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. We took two, two places. You guys know, because you were probably paying more attention than I was. Uh, I would say this is a very successful war. Now, unfortunately, at the end of every war, we have this huge standoff fee where uh, people are like, okay, well, you're not at war, so you don't need the money to um, keep those ships afloat any longer. It's not exactly how it works, I'm afraid. Those ships still exist, and we still need to pay them to be crewed. However, we're going to restation ships the way I want them, so Mediterranean here. We probably need to do some a few changes for, uh, the med like, put some more... People, actually, I want this guy as well to go to the Mediterranean. 
I think the foreign percentage might not be exactly perfect. Let's find out. It's claiming to be. Okay, well, we'll wait one month and see if it's actually working out that way or not. Um, obviously, none of our ships need to be on raiding anymore, so that will help. I don't Raiders don't count for foreign tonnage either, only active fleet or if they're on the foreign tonnage um, uh, explicitly. And I think it's definitely time to put some of our older ships into reserve. We will grab all eight of our older... Any, any legacy fleet ships. Oh, this is very sad, though. If we do this, their crew quality won't be elite when they come back. I'm pretty sure... I don't know exactly. And if somebody knows this and can leave this in the comments, I mean, if you're sure, because I'm, I, I have my... I'm not sure. I'm just speaking that this is not objective fact. This is just my experience that when you put something on reserve, it lowers their crew quality. And I don't think that if you put on an active fleet, if you leave it for enough time, I don't think they go back up to elite if that's where they were. Because elite is not something in general you can gain from just putting better tr crew training, which is what I've done. Most of the time, it only comes from battle experience. So, big question, but I don't think we have any choice in the matter. This is an unreconcilable difference to leave our ships on uh, active fleet for. So yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and put these guys on reserve fleet. I don't know if it'll help, but hopefully these uh, legacy ships will become less and less important as uh, time pushes on. Okay, weight savings on armor, that's always good. Reserve fleet, now when do you guys get back, you will also go to reserve fleet over here. Northern Europe, Northern Europe. You're gonna go to reserve fleet as well, which I think only cuts it in half. It's not like, oh, we will also probably put Ugh. I, I really want to get rid of the Gidong class. I really dislike him. Look at this cost. No, we are going to do it. We are going to get rid of the Gidong class. They are going to be our next scrapping. I really dislike this configuration. It's pretty terrible. It's super heavy. Way, way, just way too expensive for what job it accomplishes. So what will take its place instead? The Deputy Tua, the Lutouche Trabil. We can move these guys out to be um, stationed at foreign... Uh, on our foreign stations, yes, <laughs> that's a redundant way of saying that, I apologize, but what we can do is instead create a new battle cruiser to fulfill our scouting role in Northern Europe and send these guys off to replace our Gidon class in the other parts of the world. So, the better of these two is our Latouche Treville, the one that Historical Gamer made. So the Deputy Trois is going to go off to the places which are a little bit less necessary. I would say the um, okay, so we have West Africa, Southeast Asia, West Africa, Southeast Asia, Indian Ocean. Is that the only places we, that were needed? Okay, so let's send two off to Southeast Asia. Those will be... Which ones would work better together? Probably the Deputy Trois works better with its own self because the Latouche Treville... Um, is pretty good as a solo hunter since it has such a wide variety of weapons. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to send both Deputy Tuas off to Southeast Asia. They will get there eventually. And when they do, we will start scrapping these Gidon. We will also move one down to West Africa. And then we'll move our last legacy ship, even though they're not legacy, they're you know, from the previous director's tenure, over to the Indian Ocean. So that'll give us good coverage along these three areas, which um, are the majority of the places we need our foreign tonnage. So obviously we need stuff from the Mediterranean, but we have battleships there. And then in these three, we'll get something. We don't need anything in the Caribbean technically. So just having us fax there is perfectly acceptable. Good, now I'm gonna call this video to a close here. We'll pick it up in the next episode where I, that will certainly be the last one before we pass the torch on to XTRG. So I'll go ahead and let him know so he can start getting prepared for his turn. Um, but until that time, thanks so much for watching. It's been a blast, and uh, I can't wait to finish it up with a bang. Go out with a bang. I mean, there won't be any war, so there won't be much banging involved, but we should have a good time of it. Maybe get one last design in, uh, hopefully without strapping XTRG with a terrible budget. We'll figure that all out, 
Until that next episode, take care.